Welcome to Last Set News. My name is Rob, and today this is the fourth video in a series we've talked about with Masterworks. Now, we've already talked to the CEO once, we've talked to the Chief Investment Officer twice, and today we'll be talking with the, with the Chief Marketing Officer, Mr. Hai Tran, to talk about what Masterworks is and what his role is within the company. We're also going to ask some, uh, some questions about how can we verify that the art pieces that are being bought, where are they stored, where are they registered? Can we look it up on the SEC website? Can we see all these things? Because in crypto and digital assets, we don't trust, uh, we verify. So we'll talk about that. And also we'll take a look at uh, a subscriber from Digital Asset News as they had a 35% annualized return year over year for two years in their investment into a Masterworks art piece. Now, let me make this things crystal clear. Does that mean that you will get 35% annualized returns? No, that does not. The crypto that I talk about on this channel, does that mean that you will make outstanding returns? No, it does not. Every single investment that you do carries a certain amount of risk, so you must be aware of that. But me personally, I like to diversify a little bit. I like to put things into cash, into real estate, into crypto, into masterworks, and all different things in between also my businesses. So you can do whatever you want to do. This is not financial advice. I'm not your dad. Go from there. And lastly, I want to say this. Masterworks is a sponsor on this channel. However, I actually invest into Masterworks. I have two pieces, a Bass Yacht and a Banksy. So I have skin in the game as well. So if you cannot stand using affiliate links, just go to Masterworks to their website and check them out. And you can do all those things without the affiliate links, but it's up to you. So without further ado, let's talk to Mr. Hytran. So first of all, as we know, this is not a short-term play. This is fractionalized shares of art. But how does marketing and which is your specialty, how, does, how do you guys get this message out to the average investor out there that this is a very long-term play? And we're talking about two, five, seven years. The next one is in this current bear market, which we're going through right now, who is Masterworks for? And is there a bear bull market for art? And lastly, we'll talk about storage. How can we verify this? We've got a big issue here in crypto and digital assets about uh, proof of reserves. So I just wanna know like, how can we verify these things? Cause we'd like to, uh, not trust, but verify. So first things first, how do you convey that message? Yeah, I'd say, you know, what we do that's like a lot different than almost every other investing platform is I think our kind of requirements for understanding what the investment is, is, is much more stringent. So we have a very like, um, well, we have a full financial advisor team, right? So like, unlike a lot of other platforms, which try to verify if this investment is suitable for you on the site, we actually do it over the phone. Um, and obviously with like, um, what's been happening in, in financial markets and, and, and frankly just kind of fines on both SEC and FINRA side among you know some of the, the bigger players in this space like as a kind of a small startup like it's really important for us to just protect that part of our business um, so sure. I want to kind of um, give you an example and just show you a little bit of what our suitability process is so for every investor that signs up and you know today we happen to have 1600 I'll, I'm just going to one of these users um, so we're required to ask them a series of questions um, just to you know again, understand if the investment is right for them. And if it's not, we go separate ways and, and no harm, no foul either. Um, so one of the things we ask is, what's your basic investing knowledge? And it could be anything from novice to experience to advance. Obviously, if you're more advanced or experienced, that gives you a higher risk tolerance. Um, we ask you, and this is probably one of the most important questions, do you understand that uh, the objective of investments is long-term capital appreciation and the investment horizon is three to 10 years with some liquidity from secondary markets? And if you say no from this question, uh, unfortunately, we'll have to just end the phone call right there. Um, it just ah. that will be something that would not be suitable for you. Um, so that's really important for us to, to um, just make sure that, you know, uh, people don't want to charge back, they change their mind, and, and if sure. you know, life kind of needs, if they need the funds in life, that they're able to get that back. Um, and then based off of kind of, you know, um, other other uh, answers that they have about how much do they have to invest in, in, in liquid their portfolio, how much they're making um, in income, we give them a max recommendation. So in most cases, you know, we this number here, in this case for this user is 15% of their overall portfolio. And this is like more on the high end because they're more of an experienced investor. They could be younger and they could have higher net income. Um, and right. so 15,000, that, that could translate into $1,000 per painting. They may invest in 15 paintings over over the life of, of their um, time with Masterworks. And that's generally kind of how, how we see investors like adopt it and use the platform as well. Um, but generally this guidance is meant to be um, you know, what we tell folks is around 5 to 15% of their overall portfolio. And and with that understanding that you should be prepared to hold this for 3 to 10 years, um, you can trade on the secondary market. Um, and, and we've built a lot of support for that. But definitely, it's not um, the first option there. 
Gotcha. So this would, um, so we're talking about these types of things. And uh, of course it is a long-term play. I have invested myself. I have a, a Banksy and a Basquiat, but the question always is, well, how long are we talking about? And we had Alan uh, Sukolitsky, uh, chief financial officer on, he talks about, look, if you're not comfortable with three, five and seven years for, for a long-term play, then this is not for you. And uh, it makes a lot of sense. The, and, the, and the next question we had, which was, well, how are we looking as far as like the returns? So I actually got this, this was a direct message to me from Sky and I, I took away his, uh, his uh, name for obvious reasons, but he DM me, he said, hey, uh, this was actually January 10th, 2023. So I just want to confirm Massworks is legit. I invested in December, 2020. Today, it is the 19th of January, 2023. So you're talking about two years plus. It has sold my painting. It's about a 70% gain over two years. Literally one of the few things that actually gave me a return. I'm not gonna revest. The larger pot is something new. And to your point, it's totally uncorrelated. And I talked about, yeah, I still believe them. They don't give me any reasons not to. I said, which one was it? They said it was the, the brown painting. Sold for 1.8 million. That's what it's right there, 35%. That's annualized. So you're talking about 35% for one year, 35% for another year, 70%. My math is correct. Check me in the comment section. And then I said, okay, well, just get back to me to see how this works because I've never, I haven't sold my pangs either. And he said, just to close the loop, it took a week or two. Masterworks did deposit back into my bank account. My initial investment plus gains, gain was 75% over two years. This was after all their fees, which are 20%. So to your point, uncorrelated, great gains, 75%. Real, only real downside is this. Money is not available until after the artwork is sold. So it is locked up. There's a secondary market, but didn't really understand it too well. Didn't want to get into it, but I'm good for two to five year holdings. And of course, with these type of investments, there is definite risk. And I can totally understand that. So I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention that uh, yes, there are uh, people out there that are investing, but they understand that is a very long term play. And I'd actually like to touch on a little bit of the secondary market because um, I think it you know, it can't be hard to understand and I can give folks kind of a, a run through of um, how to actually use it. Um, but yeah, sure. I, I guess like, you know, when you think like, uh, you know, kind of look back at the last few years and, and you know, you, you shared that um, that touch point from someone you, um, you know who invested in the Cecily Brown. So something that I think a lot of folks misunderstand about this screen is that this is actually net return. So this is after all of our fees. Um, there's there's uh, been a lot of, I think, some comments that, that I've seen about folks who say, well, after Masterworks is high fees, like the, these numbers are, um, are actually a lot worse than they are. But yeah, this is what investors um, get back af after kind of all the work that we do. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, we, we built a fairly large team here in New York. We have 200 people. Um, and really, you know, we're all kind of heads down and solely focused on, on trying to generate um, just the best value for investors as possible. Cause yeah, sure. And then, I mean, just to, just to speak to the point, um, well, two things. First of all, if we're talking about that secondary market, uh, which uh, was, was a question there. If you like, this is my account. I'm not going to show you all the things I've done, however, but if, uh, once you get into masterworks, if I just click on trading, I can go there mm -hmm. and here's all the different ones that are available. So this is now per share, most recent trade. Usually it's around $20. Some go up, some go down just like uh, yeah. how we've seen. And you can trade them. It is, it is an option. Me personally, I'm not a trader, so I don't really care about that, but it is available for everybody. Just so, just so you know. Yeah, so you know, obviously, with a three to seven year hold, um, you know, sometimes it's just that that's just not uh, realistic for a lot of folks. So we have this uh, secondary market, um, which allows mm -hmm. you to to sell your shares and post your shares, and it's very similar to like a how a Robinhood works. Um, so if I click on, on each investment, I can see like what the spread is, um, what the ask price is, what the bid price is. Um, I'm unfortunately not allowed to trade shares as a Masterworks employee. Um, but if I did have sells, um, uh, shares to sell, uh, I just say how many shares I want to sell, what price am I satisfied with. Um, I, I click um, commit. And um, these these trades are fulfilled uh, automatically in time if there's a buyer for that. So, and if I wanted to, yes, I, I could you know trade a base off of uh, last trade price. And frankly, a lot of people do use this uh, essentially just day trade on this. There's there's folks that have made um, hundreds of thousands of dollars just just taking advantage of the spread. Um, I don't personally recommend it because uh, I think it's pretty time consuming. But yeah. if you uh, you know if you have a lot of time in your hands and and you're interested in trading art art shares, check it out. Yeah, I've got, uh, there's some people on the show that do that. That is not my thing. That is not my wheelhouse. I'm just here for the long haul and <laughs> have fun with that. Okay, so hi. <clears throat> Thanks for answering those questions. And it goes, lastly, that, that bear bull market. I mean, 
because we're here for so long, is there really like in crypto, there is a bear bull market in traditional yeah. equities there's a bear bull market. But is there like a, a bear bull market for art? Because, I mean, we just saw uh, the sale of Paul Allen and it sold for one point five billion. That was in uh, November 9th, 2022, which is like, I mean, as everything was, was going down. So is there really a bear bull market since we're, we're holding these things for so long? Um, I, I think, you know, I mean, there's a couple of things like one, like the art market is, um, it's pretty consistent in terms of how it's traded, right? So like six, $60 billion worth of art is traded each year. It's been pretty consistent. It hasn't um, really fluctuated a lot in the last, like, say, 10 years. And the other nice thing is half of it is traded publicly. So you have a very large um, data set to look at. Um, so when you want to come up to uh, come up with your own kind of conclusions, how the art market's doing, it's all publicly available. Um, and you could you know, when auctions happen, there's always headlines about it the next day, and you can see if things are generally selling for a lot of momentum or, you know, maybe not what you expected. Um, but certainly, you know, um, you know, just objectively speaking, you know, the art market had what they're saying was their best year last year um, in, in history. So so there's actually, uh, well, two things. First of all, you talked about uh, public transparency and those types of things. So real quick, just so everybody uh, is aware as far as like with artwork, if we take a look at uh, the store of value markets, this is from Fundstrat. Uh, you can see here value in billions. It says it talks about gold being uh, nine trillion. It's actually more than that. It's probably around eleven trillion. I think this is a couple of years old. Collectible art seventeen trillion, even more so than gold. Real estate two hundred twenty eight trillion. Government bonds twenty trillion, and cars and collectibles is five trillion dollars. So there's a lot of funds to be sloshing around there. It's just again, it is a very long term play if you're going to do something like this. But as far as like the public, not perception, but the ability to to see these uh, public transparencies. The last question here, storage. How can we verify these pings are actually being bought and stored somewhere? Because we have an issue right now uh, with different exchanges saying, oh, yeah, we have things and maybe they don't have things. So how can we verify that? Is there like, I don't know, some place to go to check that out? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you could come to our office. Uh, we have a bunch of works that are um, on display here. We're, we're opening up another gallery here in New York in the Chelsea area. Um, it's going to yeah. be a fairly large gallery. I think we're going to have um, a majority of our works there, um, if not all of our works. I, I think we're going to get our ducks in a row in time for that. Um, but let me also like just like, share my screen a little bit. Uh, I mean, one of the nice things I think about our business and, and what I think is both kind of challenging and fun at the same time is, you know, we are completely... Yeah. Um, Everything we do is public, right? So um, we are not only required to to be fully transparent, but also I, I think we try to make it um, as part of our, our kind of mission or SOP here to just be as transparent as possible to folks. So you can look up any painting um, that we've done. So I've searched for Master Excel 1, just happens to be our first painting. Um, and this is like, you know, it takes a little some getting used to in terms of understanding um, how to use this site. But um, essentially, you're looking for a document called Form uh, 253G2. This is like is a qualified offering circular. Everything before this is um, just correspondence with the SEC and, and filing things. Um, I think like something that is kind of like, for me, it's kind of a blast, of, um, blast of, uh, for the past to actually visit is, so when the SEC writes us and we write them, um, all this stuff is like publicly available. So you can see the SEC sent us an email here saying we have questions about this and what's your response to that. Um, so you know it's kind of funny to be able to like kind of go through our journey and see how the um, kind of the vehicles and have invested over time. Um, to get back to your, your very original question, though, um, uh, there's a line in here that says that the um, the painting, um, sorry, the art storage facility is and, and stored at a warehouse. Um, located at 111 Allen Drive, Newark, uh, in custody of Delaware Freeport. Um, hmm. So this is in our filings where, where the paintings are being stored. Um, and uh, we have 200 of them in there. So, um, yeah, it's it's pretty, uh, it's, it's large. And uh, it's, it's got $700 million worth of art. So Yeah, so, uh, yeah, very interesting to note uh, as far as, like, uh, where these things all are. And then on top of that, of course, you have to register everything with the SEC. So... Makes a little bit of sense. All right. So, hi. I think you've answered uh, everything that I have as far as moving forward. I just want to remind everybody that, again, long-term play and no investment is without risk. That is for that is for for true. So far, pretty good track record. But at some point, you know, maybe some of these art pieces may languish and, and not sell for quite some time, or maybe they be un made underperform. Anything is possible in investing. These are just the things that I am doing. I'm not saying that you have to do those things. And this is not financial advice. This is just something that uh, 
uh, we talk about here in the channel. And lastly, I will just say that, yes, of course, it is not a large part of my portfolio. Most of it is cash and real estate. There's a small percentage that is masterworks. And that is how I've decided to allocate for me. So hi, thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate it. If you'd like to learn more, there is a link in the description. It looks just like this. And uh, that's it for today. So hi, thanks okay. so much. We appreciate it. Uh, thanks, Dan. That 4% that looks, looks about right to me too. So, you know. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, everybody. Let's jump back.